Good afternoon all, CamelbackTrading.org, coming to you this Friday afternoon. Yep, still afternoon. It's only 5.52 Eastern Time. <laughs> and we're looking at the market profile of the ES and SPY. Had some things to take care of right after the close, so had to come back and do my work. Get everything ready for our end of the week video. Very, very um, strong day today. Again, a lot of short covering. Volume wasn't that great, but... Fantastic day up 1.8%. Uh, uh, so no complaints for the Bulls. The biggest thing that transpired out of this week, you know, I was hoping to get some more clarity at the end of the week what this market wants to do. In fact, we have less. All three time frames are in balance. But we did do something pretty interesting. We After yesterday, we certainly avoided an outside week down. We pushed off that monthly low pretty good. Now, again, it's only five days into the month. And we had a reversal, an island reversal gap. Both us and uh, Righty, that held. So we gapped lower yesterday and then gapped higher today, leaving this day all by itself. Now, why is that important? Well, we did take out last month's low yesterday and tested it numerous times. And then we have this performance today. Now, again... These, tra uh, these traders are so fragile and turn on a dime. You know, uh, it's foolish to say, okay, everything's great. We're going back and we're going to go get February's high. And Monday we can give it all back. But we have to take it day by day and what the chart shows us, what the profile shows us. So at least for now, the bulls avoided something that could have been pretty poor at the end of the week. And with this trend day up uh, and this island reversal, see if they can push forward on Monday. NQ goes out with a triple distribution day. They uh, have, they now they gapped today very small and filled it. So they don't hold the gap. They have single prints in B and then they have these sets here. So it's a triple distribution day. They did get fed day high and closed right around it. Righty. Holds a trend day. They're a double distribution day. They took out both sides of their IB today. And they tried to get um, to the top of Wednesday. Didn't get it. Just like us. We did not get to Wednesday's high. Okay? We made a good effort for it. Didn't get it. In fact, I was kind of surprised we didn't get it. We got within two, uh, like three points in ES and... 15, 20 cents in SPY. So it's a little surprise we didn't get it. Um, I had a really good day again. Um, this is definitely by far my best week uh, since I've been trading futures. I put another 35 points on the page. So very, very proud and happy. I made about 150 points this week. And most of them are singles and doubles because that's the kind of uh, trader I am. So I tell you when I lose. So um, I'm happy to say that uh, I've been consistent recently and put a lot of uh, points on the board. Now, it was off on the long side. In fact, I had one losing trade. Came in I period. I was a little surprised. So when we went trend, I told the room, look, I wouldn't be surprised if we battle 4150. But I said, if we hold single prints, we can get going. Well, we didn't hold single prints. And by the way, I nailed this pullback. We didn't hold them. So when we made a new high on the day, I thought it was fadeable. I'm like, okay, we'll pop the top, maybe test 4150, that's it. Obviously, that wasn't the case. I only lost two points. It popped the top, I shorted it, I forgot what I even shorted. But I took it off for a two-point loss because I was like, if you, when you're fading the extreme with a seven-wide pock, it should come in rather quickly. And it just kept languishing up there, languishing up there. And I finally took it off for a two-point loss, and, and look what happened. Good thing I did um, as we went higher. My entire day besides that was longs and made money on them. I made seven points in A uh, to go fill the single prints from Wednesday. I made uh, five and a half points in B with the one time framing up. I made six points in C when we were going to pop the top and take out the IBI. I mean, on our checklist sheet, the buyers had everything early. In D period, I made eight points. Um, with the ebb and flow prior to it, finally, 
It was with the single prints I was making money, and then we finally came down and stopped the one-time framing, but held single prints. Okay? And then in G period, this is what I talk about in the room about the lion waiting in the grass. Don't go chasing your prey. Don't go running. It's like trying to catch a squirrel with a fork. Wait for the trade to come to you. I told the room at the time, half back was down here, value. I was like, if these single prints don't hold, the market is still very strong. We raised Pock that the odds of going back to Pock are excellent. Now it came down. I got them at 28. Bought a full lot at 28. We got down to 27.50. Now for me, again, I don't hold as long. Because I was long four, I took one off for a point. I really thought that we would pull back some more. Really thought we'd test B's low, and, uh, which we never did, obviously. So I took one off for 29, took another one off for 30 and a half, another one off for 32 and a half, and then another one off at, um, at POC at the time. So it was a nice trade for me. What I, the nuance was that maybe this was in the cards is that we didn't get any other pullback. A lot of times you get that kind of inventory adjustment. It doesn't snap back right away. Now, I was very happy it did because I was long, but I thought possibly it would come back again where I can get long again. I was going to get long again above the 144 simple moving average to uh, stop the one time framing, but I didn't do that. And then I told you I shorted I for a two-point loss, and that was it. I was quite surprised, since we didn't hold this set of singles, that this market grinded and held them. And then even more surprising was after doing that, that M period couldn't even probe and get those other two daily highs. So I was a little surprised by that. But again, excellent day, excellent week. Um, as far as... Our reference points in SPY upside 413.72 and 413.87 for the downside. We have uh, two sets of single prints, 412.16 to 411.97. Then a second one, 411.79 to 64. Textbook afternoon pullback low in G, 410.20. And today's low at 408.64 and then filling the gap at 402.37. 137 cent gap. For ES, downside, single prints. 47 and a quarter to 45.75. Next set, 43.50 to 41.75. Afternoon pullback low of 27.25. And today's low of uh, 15, 41.15. Can't even read my own writing. <laughs> and then fill in the gap at 98 and a quarter. And for the upside, we have today's high of 63 and a quarter. And 67. Now let's recap all the charts for all three of these indices. Again, I really want to thank you for um, liking and subscribing to this channel. I've had a bunch of new people join the room. Um, I think we really provide a lot of insight throughout the entire trading day that I think a lot of traders would benefit from. And the biggest compliments I've gotten in my room so far from the new traders who have been in other rooms is you're an educational room informative, you're calm, no matter what the market's doing, you're telling us what you're looking for prior to it happening, and then it's up to us if we want to take that trade. For, uh, uh, for instance, that pullback in G, I told the room prior to it happening, this is what I'm looking for, and this is what I'm going to do. We always, it's like a chess game. We're also, we're always telling the next two, three moves prior to it happening. That's breaking down MGI, and that's what we offer. So here's the righty. One year of full balance, they are in. They keep going back and forth through that 173.39 line in the sand. From now, it's getting closer to four and a half years. So they're still having trouble. Now remember, small ranges last month, and we're only a week into the month, but righty has taken out both the last month's high and low, so a lot on the table. They're in balance. Weekly. Now, their weekly came snapped back pretty good, but last week um, I called it uh, balance because we had taken out the previous week's low. We took out that previous week's low, again, another weekly low again. Again, you can call it balance. I think for now I'm going to call it down. I'm going to make them prove themselves that they could take out a weekly high and come back into balance. There's one hell of a ledge here around the 180 level. Look at this. 
This is six weeks here in a row, basically. Uh, look at the highs, all between 178 and just under 180. But look at the last two weeks. We didn't get as high. Still close because it's a small range, but didn't get as high. So this is going to be a very interesting level. Are they failing at this level? Or are they going to finally pop it pretty good? I'm going to call the weekly down for now in the IWM and righty. And the daily is balance. Markets don't go bull bear. Let's keep that in mind. So we were in balance until yesterday. We came out of balance bear. You don't go back to bull today. Even though there's a gap. Even though there's an island reversal. They had one too. This is balance. It's a three-day balance. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. With your gap being the main focus. Okay? Keep that in mind. So the monthly is balanced. The weekly is down. And the daily is balance. Let's go to the Qs. Now, Triple Q so far have not taken out last month's low. Okay? Just the way we did. The way SPY and uh, IWM and Righty and ES. So right now, their monthly, to me, is still up. Right? They haven't gotten distance away from, the two, from two months ago, but they've been trying to grind higher. So for me, the monthly is up right now. Some people still call it balance because they're using... August high of 22. That's fine. But for now, I'm going to give them their due and call it up in the monthly. Weekly. Weekly never came close to taking out last week's low. They had an outside week up. Did they get a lot for their outside week up? The answer is no. Again, it's an art, not a science. You could certainly call this a six-week balance, or you can give the bulls their due and call it up. It really isn't that big a deal, because if we take out this week's high on Monday or next week, then you're firmly up. If you don't and you take it out to the bottom, well, then you're still in balance. So again, it's semantics. It's, it's not a big thing. Most people would probably call this balance, just like they might still call the monthly balance. Again, it's all preference. I'm calling the monthly up. I like the finish to the week. I'm going to give the bulls their due and see if they could take out this week's high early next week. I'm going to call the weekly up. Again, your choice. Daily. Balance. Markets don't go. Bear bull. We went balance from the inside day. Bull. Balance. Stayed balance, actually. We never took out that balance low. So we're still in balance for the most part. Yes, we uh, took out this high. Barely. So for now, though, I'm going to incorporate this as one large seven-day balance for triple Qs. So for me, the monthly's up. Weekly up, again, very slightly on both of those, and the daily is balance. Now let's go to ES and SPY. ES is firmly in balance on the monthly. First week of the trading month, we took out last month's low and high. He said that's a very strong possibility because of the small range. Smallest range we had in over three years, three years and four months. So now we have everything on the table for the next three, four weeks of May to see if we have an outside month down, outside month up, or whatnot. But it is firmly balanced on the monthly. The weekly is balance. We took out last week's low. We took out last week's high. Now, you can call it a five-week balance, which it is, but the entire range of it is this week. So now, how do we come out of balance? Do we take out this week's high and go up? Or do we take it out and go down? So remember, we came down, right? We were in balance here. We went down. Balance in March of 23, three-month balance. And then what happened? April went bull. May bull. June bull. July continued bull. Uh, I'm giving you the wrong. <laughs> I'm giving you. This is weekly. I'm giving you monthly. We came out of this week to balance and in a week of March 27th went bull, and the following weeks went bull until this week put us back in balance. And that's where we are. I was thinking I was on the monthly. And then on the daily, again, balance. They don't go bear bull. We went bear back to balance, three-day balance, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So the monthly is balance. The weekly is balanced. The daily is balanced. That's a market still waiting for MGI. But I have to give the bulls some kudos for avoiding an outside week down. 
And for now, absolutely rejecting below last month's low. Hope you had a good week trading. Enjoy your weekend, rest up, and we'll speak prior to the opening on Monday.